Okay, so I think we're live. Good evening, uh, Professor Williams. Hello. Hello. How, how, how are you doing? A bit tired, but doing okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday evening. Uh-huh. Wait, and what a Saturday it's been. We have seen today as uh, as someone, I won't say who, someone described a, 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 a digital extravaganza unfold online uh, surrounding the offers like monuments, monument that I, uh, well, you know, I have a I have a strange relationship with, but we'll come to that in a bit. Um, can you just explain for people who are coming to this at the end of the day, or maybe from from the RKC audience who are tuning in, uh, what's been going on today? Why we've been doing it, or why you've been doing it? So you know, such okay. hard work today, and uh, and what 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 the whole point of it is? Okay, well, first first of all. Um, as everyone knows, almost everything in the archaeological world is cancelled at the moment or postponed at the moment because mm. of the COVID-19. So we are this is this is serious stuff. It's a it's a it's a frustrating time for everyone. It's a very financially pressured time for many. Um, and uh, obviously a lot is going on. But we were very determined beca- um, to try and continue with an event that we'd long planned mm. now. And because the timing of this event was so crucial for everything we've been trying to do about the Offers Dyke Collaboratory, this research network that's uh, bringing together enthusiasts, amateurs, heritage practitioners, and arch- academics from all range of disciplines to try and mobilise, get mem- draw, bring momentum together for a new phase of research on Britain's biggest uh, linear earthworks, linear monuments, Dykes, whatever you want to call them, mm-hmm. um, and particular Watts Dyke and Offers Dyke. So, despite this chaotic pandemical time that we're living in, we were really keen to try and push on, not with a holding a potentially dangerous, you know, event of lots of people crammed into a small village hall in Trevonan in Shropshire, uh-huh. which was the original plan, uh-huh. but actually to try and get a digital event going. So that's what we're, we've, I've been working for weeks to try and deliver digitally everything that we plan to do in a village hall in Trevonan in northwest Shropshire, which is a village that sits on Offers Dyke. So yes. we really wanted to try and everything we'd committed to, the talks and a guided tour in the afternoon, which uh-huh. was the plan, we've tried to replicate online by doing giving different speakers have been giving blog posts as their presentations, Twitter presentations. I've done a series of video presentations. Mm-hmm. And that was our that was our original morning plan. And then in the afternoon, I was going to be walking with 100 people around their village or local people and and, and showing them bits of surviving Offers Dyke, this uh-huh. massive bank and ditch that's dated to the 8th century AD, and then talk about issues surrounding how do we interpret this? What did it mean in the 8th century? What does it mean to us today? How do we preserve it for future generations? So that was the that was what we were going to do in the real world. And that's what we tried to do today digitally through uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and um, something else. Can't even remember. Oh, and our <laughs> blogs, our web, our website. Yeah, that's it. The Office Dyke Collaboratory has this website thing. So we put posts up there with links to everything else. And, you know, um, did it work? I don't know. Um, I've, got, I've never done anything like this before. Mm-hmm. I mean, academia is not exactly new to digital, conf- you know, video conferencing and no. things. But and and you we've had you know some great uh, innovations over the last decade uh, of of recording archaeology presentations live and so that other people who can't access them can can do that can can actually see them later that's all great but I I I'm, I, I certainly haven't been involved in an event that's tried to go in a short amount of time suddenly go go digital yeah. and try to replicate everything that we would have done you know face to face so it's been a bit of a learning curve. It's been, as always with all these things, Mark, it's you know, 20 times more work than you think it's going to be. Kind of glad it happened and we can be proud because of the momentum we're building, you know, that, that this can move on and encourage people to be more interested in these monuments. <laughs> That's the idea anyway. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, and uh, a special offer indeed um but uh well in that sense it has been it's been yeah it's been it's been an interesting couple of days pulling this together um to, on my end as well i suppose at the last minute I yes said, no thank you let's for your do help. a live yes. thing and you're like yes, okay 
<laughs> why not? And uh, and hopefully this evening will go smoothly. I think I, th- I think one of the things I I I, that I I wanted to give people an opportunity to to experience this evening was a bit of a, a conversation about offers, Dyke, because it's one of the it's one of the lesser known significant monuments in Britain. You know, and in in terms of it, but you know, maybe it's in the top hundred or something for yeah. most people. But for a lot of people, when you when you say to them, "Offers like," they should be thinking possibly Hadrian's Wall, but they they often they'll sort of raise an eyebrow and go, "Oh," in so much as, uh, it, 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 especially for international audiences, it's 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 missable. And uh, so I hope, I wanted to sort of give an opportunity to talk a little bit about what it is and talk a bit about some of the attendant issues and also give you a chance to sprinkle in some elements of uh, of what's happened today in your in these discussions. Uh, but also this evening uh, there'll be an opportunity to win prizes. Points mean prizes, yeah. kids. Um in so, in so much as uh we decided to uh to put together some giveaways uh linked with four competitions we're gonna be running this evening. I think the the deadline have you decided on the deadline? Is it tomorrow, Monday? I think I think it should be I think it should be giving people another day, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. At least tomorrow. Uh, yeah, at least till something. the end of tomorrow maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh to to come up with uh well artistic uh Fantastic, um, intellectual, and uh, trivia-driven responses to offers like that's so, it. That's yeah. it. A variety of responses. Yeah, a variety of that. responses. And uh, and I'll just actually put on screen because again we've been we've been we've been working so hard on this. Uh, yeah. An example of, for example, some of the prizes. So, for example, uh, in the uh, multiple choice quiz, uh, people will have the opportunity to potentially win uh, an uh, as the first prize. Uh, an Office Dyke Association 50th anniversary mug. Uh, as the second, oh, they're worth having. Oh, well, indeed, indeed, worth having for you know, worth worth their, their weight in gold. Um, second prize would be uh, the C- uh, not I know you said Caesar Augustus beer then a, a trowel bottle opener uh, made by my fair hand, and uh, third prize wow. would be I think I think one of actually we, that's we're missing the ooze aren't we the ooze. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, third prize will be, uh, I think, one of. I don't think it's that necessarily the pair, but you can uh, possibly yeah. choose a patch, either the black or the brown patch. There uh, yeah. offer uh, offers like a national trail there uh, patch. So, Good so, so these these are the sort of things that that, that we'll be offering. Uh, but first and foremost, I would like to begin by. Uh, Offering you the chance to, to describe a little bit about offers like where is it and what okay. is it? And I'll try and put up maps appropriately or, or whatever else. And I must say, let, let me be absolutely clear to support you that it's not too patronising to do this because there's many heritage professionals, many informed people. I was even approached by um, the camera crew wanted to film me on offers like mm-hmm. and then they said it's near Hay on Y, isn't it? And I went. No, <laughs> you know, so it's not it's not patronising because many people have heard of the name, but they have no clue where it is. So no. in answer to your question, where is it? Uh-huh. This is Britain's longest monument. Its exact length is debated, but it runs for at least 65 miles, maybe up to 120 miles, depending uh-huh. on where it goes. Uh-huh. And it let's start south for a change. Okay. It's, uh, there's a long stretch of it on the east side of the Y Valley stretching up from Chepstow. And many yes. people will know that Chepstow is right the way down there in south, on the border of South East Wales, on the border of Gwent. And it stretches up and defends the, the Forest of Dean from the um, from Wales, what it becomes Wales. Mm-hmm. And then we find it again, bits of it on the Herefordshire Plain, northwest of Hereford. And then we get the classic stretch of it going through the Clun Forest, through the Vale of Montgomery, and up northwards, stretching up through Shropshire, into what is now Wrexham and Flintshire. And at some point it stops. And yes. there's a huge debate about the current <laughs> view is it stops in a, a village of Troythin in Flintshire. Mm-hmm. But some people will still try to suggest, and we, that's one of the discussions of today, that it may have gone all the way to the, um, to the, to the uh, Irish Sea. Yes. So it basically is a monument that brackets off what becomes Wales from what becomes England. Mm-hmm. And I, I say that very carefully because a lot of people say, oh, it divides England and Wales. It never divided England and Wales. Mm-hmm. It never will divide England and Wales. It defy, It was built by the Mercian kings of the 8th century, the Anglo-Saxon kingdom, Midland kingdom of England, of what's become England. 
uh, from Welsh rivals, multiple Welsh rivals. Mm -hmm. But there was no England and there was no Wales when Offa's Dyke was built. Lots of people have... Yeah, so so that's what it is. It's well, Britain's I, longest monument, and it um it runs up between what is now England and Wales. Yeah, and well, and to that end, it's worthwhile pointing out on this map on screen that that Tamworth there was the uh the capital of Mercia. Uh, so so yeah. so it's now a, a, it's, it's 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 a decent sized town, but compared to its neighbour yeah. Birmingham, for example, these days, it's not a, a a massive city. So it was a different world and definitely a different British Isles at the yeah. time. Now, um, I'll just put up an another image on screen, uh, and that is that uh, offers like um now has the Offers Dyke Path, which is a, a sort of a national route that goes between Frostatin and uh, Chepstow in the south. Celebrating uh, its 50th anniversary next year. Well, yeah. indeed, H hence the mug, hence the mug. Um, yes. And it's, it, 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 it's, it's a point of pride, but also a curious thing for me to have lived uh, in Frostatin and now here in Wall's End at the end of two nationally significant rather lo you know rather long linear earthwork walled monuments mm. um i've spent most of my time seemingly on the fence howard <laughs> <laughs> that's not always a bad thing to be much much snide comments about centrists and things like this yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, you know yeah. we, we all need to be have a balanced view of see but both sides of any any barrier i feel well, except when it comes to rugby of course of course um, well that's true that's true. naturally but uh, but actually just, just just with that in mind so, so i've got a photo here that i took last time i was in prostatin um and so the prostatin end uh, of offers dyke is marked by a um uh, a, a fairly interesting looking little mm. uh little sculpture and mm. uh yeah, there's some attendant signage there if people want us to take a moment to, to read uh read that in both english and welsh there mm. and the, the reason why i say it's a strange thing is that growing up in Fastatin, uh, i remember as uh, especially as a high school student i became more and more aware of of the fact that this path in particular, well, the path in particular ended in Prostatin. But actually, if you talked to uh, teachers, to local councillors, to even local historians, their focus was on Romans, uh, mm -hmm. not on this this thing that, or this path uh, in particular, but also this monument that might have ended uh, in in the town, uh, and also mm -hmm. not even on the, uh, you know, things like the Normans or the the Iron Age hill fort mm -hmm. in Deserth just up the road. It was mm -hmm. always on the Roman bathhouse, um, which incidentally, <laughs> fun fact, <It's> very nice, <laughs> uh, was my first ever museum display. Actually, I put together a museum display in in Rill um, for the bathhouse. It may still be there, depending on budgets. I don't know. Um, but anyway, to, the point is, sorry, it, it was interesting to, to grow up there and to, to, to know that this thing was here, but never really to understand it, never really to have a full grasp of it. And also, as you say, there's this weird thing. People would say, oh, well, it divided England from Wales, but today it's nowhere near the border. Yeah. So I guess, uh, and genuinely, in so much as I, as much as I love the Saxon and Viking period, I, I'm, I've studied vikings in much more detail and North, northumbria much in much more detail so this is a little bit uh, for my benefit as well can you describe how and why people think uh offers like came into into being why why was this grand ditch dug in the first place yeah well firstly that the the, reason, the fact is that early medieval kings are digging linear earthworks from the late 6th and 7th century mm -hmm in different parts of Britain. Mm. And we know now from the, the dating that has been done that Offa's Dyke was not in, an innovation. And indeed over, uh, well, almost 40 years ago now, the Anglo-Saxon historian Patrick Wormald said, perhaps it's better to understand Offa's Dyke as the culmination of a long practice of dike building or wall building or rampart building that stretches from prehistory through to the 8th, 9th century, mm. of which the Romans are just a part as well. Mm. So I think the one level we have to see this is this is what this is one way of investing labour and resources to try and control the landscape. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that means that is different from saying it was the border of the Mercian kingdom. In fact, I think if anything, we are now understand and all of the historians and archaeologists, lots of uncertainty. But one of the key things we agree on is it was not a territorial border. And another thing I think we all agree on, it wasn't exclusively a military work. No, it was no. it had. A, and, and what we think is that it's about controlling 
movement of people and animals and other resources and stopping access of certain groups to uncontrolled access to those resources. So I think the Mercian kings were doing it to um, allow them to defend their core territories, divide different groups um, on either side of the monument from each other, mm -hmm. and to provide a line of military advance and attack and raiding westwards to control and, and dominate the peoples to the west. But did they ever consider it as a border? I think not. I don't think it's dividing ethnically or, or culturally people within a few miles of each other who would have been Welsh or Old English speaking. Or, you know, I think this was a part of a very fluid frontier that would have stretched for literally tens of miles back from it mm. and forward from it. Mm. So to to try and understand it as a modern barrier, like a modern geopolitical border, is I think the last thing that a Mercian king in the late eighth century would have considered. It was an investment of resources to control mm -hmm. movement of people, to to extract economically and to dominate politically, sure. But I don't think it was ever about stopping hordes of migrants or about trying to um ethnically cleanse a territory to its east or any of the other more, you know, sort of simplistic stories that get told about Offa's Dyke, to deliberately bracket in, hold in the Welsh, uh, yeah. because they were so dangerous for him. Um, but so, but I'm saying, what I'm not saying, and the other thing that gets said a lot is, oh, it was just a symbol of his power. No, it was a symbol of royal power and authority to demonstrate the ability to mobilise resources to do something that people could then recognise that king had done. It wasn't just simply, I mean, we're not even in that territory now with our walls. I mean, tr mm. Trump has never going to build his wall. We know that. No one's ever really believed he's ever going to finish it. It's a rhetorical device of political discourse. I think for Offa, this was a real thing. It was it had to be real. It was made to be a physical barrier, but not a frontier work. No. It was a symbol of power, but it was a symbol of power that is intended to do something. The problem is we don't know how long it was used for, and we have no long, real no clue of whether it was maintained for more than a generation. So that's the other challenge. It may uh, have been short-lived. Yeah, it, uh, well, and it, so and so in that sense, we we should avoid uh, characterizations of maybe this being a a garrisoned border. Um, mm. I, mean, I, I mean, this is actually a border, again living on living on Hadrian's Wall now. Yeah, I'm, I'm painfully aware of actually some of the characterizations of of this. Uh, line that I live on, this arbitrary line in that sense, um, as being uh, a border between Scotland and England. It's never really yeah. played a significant role in dividing those two, what became those two countries. Not really. Um, it's it's often characterised as constantly being under attack. The evidence for that is relatively yeah. scant. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's characterised as being uh, uh, essentially a bit of R and R for the troops. And that that may well be the case, but what 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 it's rarely understood as is as a complicated, nuanced economic and uh, and also crucially designed to be relatively permeable kind of border. It allows access, but mm. it can also controls access as well. Mm. Uh, it, it's it's an interesting situation when you come to talking about borders and borderlands, I guess. Um, but before before we move on uh, in our conversation, uh, let's let's begin uh, the the round of competitions for the evening. Um, yes. With first of all, well, which which, what, which one do you want to kick off with? I think we should end with the the silliest and start with the most serious. How about that? Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> whatever start, you think we'll, that might be, <laughs> we'll start. Well, I think the most serious actually would be the Digi Dike competition, I suppose. Uh, and this okay. is uh, we're asking folks, uh, you folks at home, to uh, to come up with an initiative that you would propose to better communicate uh, offers dyke and what's dyke via digital media uh, yeah. the, the, these uh, these proposals can be as long or short as you want uh, the the respective uh, answers should be tweeted at the ocd collaborate uh, yeah so OD make it public it's not OCD. sort of a yeah, we, we, a lot of the papers today were addressing this. How do we visualize? How do we communicate? Uh -huh. The whole day was about trying out new ways of digitally communicating. So I suppose what and, and the paper I did about what's dyke and public archaeology and then the follow up digi dyke paper with one of my students mm. is about what's the best way of communicating 
uh, to new audiences using digital media. And archaeologists, we have this love-hate relationship with uh, social media, don't we? We, At one level, we say it's the cure of all ills. Another level, we're going, oh, it's very complicated, you know, and maybe we shouldn't be doing it the way it is. And maybe who are we, who are we not, who are we silencing with our loud mm-hmm. voices? Well, you know, I think there's all sorts of problems and challenges. Mm-hmm. But I, I, as a simple proposal, what do you think we should propo- prioritise, mm-hmm. you know, to make people more aware okay. of um, these Britain's biggest, longest, whatever the phrase you want to have, early medieval monuments. Okay. And, and I suppose in that sense, uh, I, get, I imagine element, an element of feedback on the day would also be welcome. It'd be, any yeah. feedback yeah. is good mm-hmm. feedback. Yeah. Um, um, uh, well, no, let's not. Yeah, well, almost. <laughs> no, anything that you think didn't work or we could have done differently. I mean, I'm new to this. Everyone's new to this or many people are new to this. Um, there are people who are much more experienced than this. Uh, and uh, But as I said, the short term, having to turn this around was a bit of a, you know, not something I expected to be happening. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so anything you think we could do, because if we do this one next year, we might have a special offer too, the return. Uh, where, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, not I, right now but maybe 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 and it, it, we'd like to know what worked and what was a waste of everyone's time okay okay and let's just put on screen then the uh so the prizes for this particular competition um the top three answers or, uh, which will be picked uh dep- based on their quality and also i, I imagine that if everything's super high quality there'll be an element of random as well going on uh yes, first prize, why not? Why in, not? <laughs> first prize for that uh offers dyke journal uh volume one uh, a hard yes. copy of that, which uh, yes. which Howard I think is bra- has been brandishing um, quite a lot recently. Actually, I'll just quickly quickly uh, quickly show you that. Uh, there you go. Oh, yeah. ooh! ooh. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a new journal, Mark. There's not exactly that many new academic <laughs> journals that are both open access and then Archiopress, The lovely people at Archiopress came along and said, "Well, we'll print ones out and uh, exactly. we can sell them as well." Exactly, so and there it, you have it, one. It, it even smells nice. Oh, it smells a sort nice of earthy. Smelling journal. Linear earthworky, actually. Will, but will, no, you, night, will, night. Will, will you offer to dip it in some dyke water if people want? Or it, it, I, <laughs> I, can, I can soil it to to whatever people's tastes. Yes, <laughs> to their, to their st- standard of, of authenticity. Um, yes, second exactly. prize. Authentic. The second yeah. prize in that competition will be uh, a bottle open a trowel uh, made by My Fair Hand. And third prize will be um, a choice of cloth patch from Office Dyke. So feel free to... Uh, Office Dyke Association, I Office should Dyke say. Association. They uh, offered yes. those uh, prizes for us. So thanks to them. Definitely. Um, and yeah, so, so tweet at the ODC, not OCD, uh, ODC or Laboratory, the Office Dyke Collaboratory yeah. Twitter uh, handle. We've been tweeting all day with the conference, so people should be able to find it if they search for hashtag spe- special offer. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Now, um, how do you feel that people today interact with Office Dyke? In so much as, the, yeah, the, especially since I've moved away from from uh, from the homeland, um, people have, for the most part, brought it to my attention when it's been damaged. So there's, there was a very in, fairly yeah. infamous case uh, a couple of years ago now where a landowner mm-hmm. didn't know in inverted commas that the dike was there. Um, how how what's your experience th- through this project, uh, and and what's the collaboratory's experience of people's interactions with the monument in the landscape? Well, I'm happy to be corrected on this point, actually, right. and I'm happy for people to tell me otherwise. But my overall process from talk for two and a half years of doing public talks, from seeing reactions online, there is the nationalist perspectives on these monuments and English nationalism and a Welsh nationalism. Mm-hmm. But most people, frankly, it's a, they associate it with a long distance walking trail. So they interact with it at points on a long distance walk. There are a number of places where it's in the locality. There's a Ruaban walking trail that takes in Watts Dyke, its companion monument, and Rob Rua, um, Offers Dyke. Mm. The Oswestry, um, there's a walking, uh, Oswestry Round Challenge walk, which was promoted today, which takes in both Watts Dyke and Os- Offers Dyke. So in other words, walking is one of the ways that people engage with it. But when they're doing that, they're really walking and they're looking at the beautiful landscape around. They're not really interested in the monuments and that's fine. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's important. We promote everything in, in the landscape from mm. the earliest times, to the industrial age into the modern times and offers Dyke is often just part of that. So at one level, it's just a, a generic feature of the environment. Another level, it's a part of a walking trail. A lot of people, they don't know where it is. So I've had people that come up to me after talks and say, do you know, I thought Pedicloth the Hillfort was part of Offers Dyke. Thanks mm-hmm. for explaining that to me. And they're not 
ignorant people. They've been walking in that landscape for decades, and yet they kind of in their mind, because the Offa's Dyke Trail goes over Penniclothi I Hill Fort, yeah. it's not ridiculous yeah. for a, a person who hasn't read up on it to make the equation of those ramparts of a late Bronze Age, early Iron Age hill fort mm-hmm. and, and equate them with Offa's Dyke. So, I mean, to be honest, I'm very sympathetic that people are confused because I think it's really a lot of heritage professionals I've talked about are pretty confused about these monuments, too. So I don't I don't deride any of this local confusion. And another classic thing I have to mention is that Watts Dyke, which runs for 62 kilometers east and parallel to the northern stretch of Offa's Dyke. Well, actually, I'll, just, people... I'll just put a, a map on screen. Yeah. Actually. So, so what's Please like is, is the green line on this map. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's another monument that's very enigmatic. And mm-hmm. unlike Offa's Dyke, we don't know who what was or who he was. It's maybe a mythical or legendary name. Offa's Dyke has since the 12th century been called Offa's Dyke and been associated with the late 8th century Mercian king, Offa. Um, but we don't really know for sure if he built it all or any of it. But there's, that's a whole debate mm-hmm. we have. But, but this monument is... Um, often called Offa's Dyke. And I, w- I was walking in Wrexham recently with some students to look at it. And I, uh, a man came out of his house and, and said, what are you doing? And I went, oh, hello, we're just looking at what's Dyke. No, Offa's Dyke, that's Offa's Dyke. And I did, you know, didn't want to do the, no, 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 I'm sorry, let me explain the patron. No, I just said, okay, right, uh, sorry, mate. Yeah, it's, you've got a lovely, I wasn't looking at your house. I wasn't looking at your car. I was looking at off, uh, Offa's Dyke then, shall we say, yeah. and nod and wink to the students and I explained yeah. afterwards. You know, in other words, people equate the monuments with each other. They confuse them. And that confusion may have gone back centuries, actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of confusion about what these monuments are. And antiquarians seem to have got them confused. Yeah. So my under- people are confused by them. It's the shorthand. Well, uh, so, well actually, uh, the shorthand, I guess, for what you just described is that you were being awfully polite. In, in not uh, I, not I, challenging I, the, the guy. Sorry, I try on. not to offer the cuff. <laughs> oh. You see, and now we're, we're preempting uh, another competition for this evening, so we're, let's not let's not let's not break the puns out yet. Um, but actually, I'm just going just to just bring up a couple of photos then um, of. Uh, oh, actually, no, sorry, no. It is it is around about that time. Let's 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 use, use that as a jumping off point. Sorry for the pun competition. We we would like you as the second yes, competition yeah. of the evening to uh, come up with puns related to offers like uh, either yeah. based on some of the obvious ones, you know, offer. It, it lead, lends itself to some some uh, obvious English words, but there may be other puns out there to be had as well. You and... never know. We want we want innovation in punnage. I I must be. I, I'm quite. Um, people get quite angry at my low quality puns. I think we need to up the standard, and especially if we're starting to be so shameful as to call our public engagement events after, with with puns. You know, oh, I think yeah. this is this is serious business, and we yeah. need to up the standard. Is, you know, yeah, I think absolutely. I can see a theoretical archaeology group sessions about the woeful neglect of high quality pun deployments and we we really have to do better as a community we do we do i mean this is this is a serious issue um and we need your help (laughs) we need your help and to encourage you we do encourage you with those puns uh we have uh Again, three tiers of prizes. Very familiar, very similar to uh, the DigiDike competition. Uh, first prize in terms of pun quality uh, will be the off- a hard copy of the Office Dike Journal. Aforementioned, it can be soiled to your uh, to your desire. If you want it dipped in official dike water, we can we can arrange that. I know the be- um, I know the best places. Ex- yeah. <laughs> Second place uh, would be uh, a bottle opener trial made by moi, and third place will be. Um, a, a wonderful prize of a cloth patch uh, offers like National Trail in brown Ooh. or black. Ooh. Wonderful. And thank you for your prizes too. What a wonderful additional oh, possibility. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Why? I, mean, I wish I could enter myself. <laughs> Um, do you know what? If it's, uh, we, we we won't dwell on that. Um, so uh, yes, no. so I just want to just go through a couple of um, of photos actually of of the dike because uh, and also yes. related monument because actually we, 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 you put you were kind enough to put together a series of photos for us to take a look at. And now I'll, I'll try and just I'll tell you what what you've called them and you can describe what we're looking at. Okay, uh, so um, there's a photo. Uh, let's start with actually. Uh, is it Ruabon? 
Ruaben? Ruaben. Ruaben, sorry. Uh, and uh, we have some... This uh, photo seemingly relates to the relationship between the dike and the trail path. Is that some people walking along the trail there to the left-hand side, do you think? Oh, I haven't seen it just yet. It'll take a second till it comes up. I can't remember which one I, I sent you. I think there's maybe one of, one of my students. This is uh -huh. where my students are roaming along the land. Oh, I know where this is. Yes, yeah, so this is by, right by a high school. This is by a secondary school in Rowaban. Yes, here we are. So this is, a, in, in a, this is in the secondary school. So this is a good example of how the, the monument, into one of its most amazingly well-preserved little stretches, only a few hundred metres, with a bank is up to four meters or more tall mm. there and the ditch on the right is obviously heavily denuded it would have been a re at least three meters deep uh when first cut mm -hmm. to a monument the overall vertical height difference about seven seven and a half meters mm. massive monument facing and blocking off the vale of flangothlan but yes. today it sits right next to a high school so all uh, at that very point every break time all the kids sort of walk stroll out onto the sports field for uh you know, for, for a break. So it's just amazing that this monument, so poorly understood, going for so many miles. Mm -hmm. And here, um, oh, this and the other point to make about this, actually, is this wonderfully beautiful stretch uh, was was good enough for Channel 4 to film me on, but not good enough for the Offers Dyke Trail, because the Offers Dyke Trail doesn't walk along this bit. They, oh. they leave it uh, um, and go up onto Trevor Rock's and around onto the Cluidian Mountains via Land Landegla Forest. So they, they missed because this was too common. This is too this is too industrial. It's I sullied see. by industry and smoke and working class people. Uh -huh. And it's oh, that's a bit unfair. <laughs> but but you know, my point is that fifty years ago the idea was to create look at the beautiful landscapes of Wales and maybe yeah. get as much of Offers Dyke into the line of the path as possible. Yeah. But for me, this is one of the choice bits of Offers Dyke mm. because you can see what it's doing in the landscape, it's blocking the Vale of Clangothlan, a major artery in and out of the Highlands of Wales, and it's massive, and it's right next to people's homes and, and a school. So yeah. you can get a sense of how it matters to people today. It's right in the middle of people's communities. So well, when people think of these Offers Dyke, they may think of a dramatic aerial photograph of it sweeping over a hill in the yeah. middle of nowhere. No, in this case, it goes right past people's homes. Well, in that, in that case, uh, it, 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 again, obviously, living on Hadrian's Wall and having lived at the end of Offers Dyke Path, uh, and also in and around all the glorious castles in Wales as well, um, mm. I, I gain a certain appreciation for. I'll just take take away the photo for a second. A certain appreciation for um, uh, for the way in which people have to live in that historic landscape. So what you were just talking about in terms of mm. how people sort of say, uh, oh, I thought that that hill fort was part of the uh, office dike, even mm. though they're separated by thousands of years in terms of history. It's interesting how to extant populations, the historical landscape is there. And now in mm. modern times, we're observing that landscape. And it, the, the, I guess the layers are sometimes lost. But also there's a very real... Uh, problem when it comes to having to live with some of this stuff so for example in conwy they had to uh in the victorian area create a, a hole in the castle wall to get the train to come in mm. as it were um some people think that those are eyesores in terms of solutions other people think that they're actually quite elegant mm. the same happened here in newcastle uh the train station actually is made out of bits of hadrian's wall mm. uh, itself mm. um and so I, I suppose part of an extension i guess of my question in terms of how people interact with the monument today would be um uh do, 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 does the does the prosaic relationship with the monument uh, do you find that actually in some places as you say in, in the case of uh, Ruaben that, that actually it means that the monument itself is 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 quite well preserved because if people just live, people move around it they live mm. there just, they're not in, uh, they're not encumbered by it i suppose i think my colleagues in the heritage uh, uh, conservation side of things i think if you talk to a caddo inspector mm. not quoting them they would say <laughs> that it's 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 not exactly it's more than a ball ache it's a nightmare because it's not just simply one landowner who owns 78 fields or whatever four yeah. fields it's it's everyone's back garden at yeah. this point rubs up against the monument so i think from a management point of view this is one of many areas where it's just a problem mm. but i see it as an opportunity as well and i think the ability of this monument what's dyke even more so because what's dyke runs right the way through where north wales's largest town and wet wrexham mm -hmm. but offers dyke too in many mm. places it does come close to villages and to major towns um like Ruaben, 
and it does allow us to think of new ways to engage new generations with these monuments. But I, I have what, what we haven't done yet, and I don't want to speak for the people of Rwanda or anywhere else because we haven't done the work to interview or to, you know, yeah, and, and whether it's a couple of touchy feeling, how do you feel about offers? I don't know really, you know, um, which I, I think there is a genuine work to be done there to evaluate yeah. what hmm. people actually know and care about these monuments. And that hasn't been done. And so I don't want to, I don't want to pretend I know what they think of the monument, no, but no, I suspect no, no. it's, 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 a, it's, it's, I would suspect it's, it's, it's just ignorance or it's a bit there really. And, yeah. oh, that may be done by the, the, the Saxons or maybe just by the Mercians or I don't think people really know whether it's in Wales or England they know what to make of it it's only used in cheap lines a Cameron used it a few years ago my colleague Professor Keith Ray pointed this out to me David Cameron used this as uh, to, to deride the Welsh Labour government in in, in Wales for its um, NHS provision and he used anyone west of Offersdyke has this x number a higher chance of death because of the Welsh Labour. And so it does occasionally get used. Applied Cymru leader Adam Price recently used it to make the point that, well, apart from one king in the, he said 7th century, he meant 8th century, but we'll let him off. Well, apart from, you know, someone said, well, how could Wales possibly ever be independent? And he said, well, apart from one crazy king in the 7th century or whatever, we've always had an open border. Yeah. The point he was trying to make was that just being an independent country doesn't necessarily mean you close down the border, which is ironic in the context of Brexit, of course. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, it does, it does get used by politicians occasionally to make shots either side, either way. But most people who live in this landscape, it's part of their environment. It's not so polemicized. But yeah. the problem is, but for most people, it's just not even an issue. It's not even there. No. And I think that's what we need to sort of really sort of get people engaged with and interested in. Uh, and, and Use it as a way in to talk about early medieval societies. And by that way, we get hopefully a better informed discussion, a cultural and political discussion, rather than leaving it to the extremists mm. to rant on about English exclusive identities and Welsh exclusive identities. I think, and you know, and I, think, I think that's probably where... Um where, for example, Hadrian's Wall and Office Dyke differ quite a lot. If you ask anyone on Hadrian's Wall, what is it, who built it, and maybe when was it built, they'll have an answer for you. At the very least, they'll know it's yeah. a Roman monument. Yeah. Uh, whereas Office Dyke does sort of disappear into the landscape somewhat. I mean, essentially, yeah. I never know when I'm driving home to, uh, to to Denbyshire. I never really know when I've crossed it. I know when I've crossed the English Welsh yeah. border. There's a nice big sign saying, you know, welcome to Croesoe Gumley. But there's nothing actually um, in terms of Office Dyke really marking it. Um, I suppose just, just, just to go back just briefly to that picture from Roab, and we do have some other pictures, but this one I think I'll, I like particularly. Um, should we imagine then that the, that the dyke originally, uh, you say that when it was originally dug up, that it would have been uh, deeper than it is today. Would it have mm. been dressed in, you know, in so much as, for example, sometimes, no. uh, you know, uh, you'll have revetments that are dressed with stone, for example. What, how, yeah. what, how different would it have looked in, in, in the end? I mean, I think the problem we have is thinking of Hadrian's Wall as a stone monument and thinking of as dyke as an earthen monument. Mm. Both Watts Dyke and Offa's Dyke when excavated are packed with local stone yeah and there's there's an open question but the keith ray and ian Baptist's recent book from 2016 um offers dyke um um makes the point that there's a number of places where there's exposed stonework mm. and most people have said oh it's later dry stone walling stuck on top of the dike as a boundary for Mm -hmm. sheep and mm -hmm. cattle and stuff and that may be the case but they open up the possibility that we really need to do further investigation was it ever not necessarily had a wall on top but was it ever um retained did it have a retaining wall mm -hmm. and keith ray also makes a really fascinating point that in some stretches down in the y valley and mm -hmm. some points also that i've seen more more further to the north mm -hmm. Were they scraping back the natural geology mm. and limestone and, and other deposits so that, frankly, whether it was made of dry stone or walling material or not, it would have looked from a distance like a huge scrape down, almost like seven or eight metres deep of huge, almost like a giant's construction, yeah. a yeah. massive wall. I mean, would it actually was part of the intention, at least in parts, to make it look like the ruins of Hadrian's Wall as they survived in the eighth century landscape? 
And that is a really striking possibility because mm. the whole point of what Offa was doing, whatever his military and, and, and economic stratagem was in detail, we'll never know. But I think most people would agree that part of this is about an ideology of imperial power. Mm. And trying to draw on some of that Roman past in his vision of his own kingship and his own kingdom. Mm. And I think what we're looking at. So that's a really interesting point. Now, the, it goes over so many different types of geology. We wouldn't ex it'd be shocking if it survived consistently, consistently yes. in the same way that Hadrian's Wall is not all stone. No. And that's my point about it's, it's a mistake to think either way. You know that. But many people do. Wall Town Crags, it was a stone wall. We know that, that that's not the case. And likewise, so Offa's Dyke, I think it would have looked very differently in different places. Mm. But I think they're scraping back the natural geology, building it up, depending on different topographies, to make it look imposing, impressive and wall-like, not mm. to make it look like an earthen bank. Um, so when people have reconstructed these things, they make them look kind of like a t the mown grass. You know? yeah. And I think it would have perhaps, we, you know, another possibility that we, we, a lot of people have speculated about, did they plant thorn hedges in the ditch or yeah. on the counterscarp or, you know, on the banks, as well as this, you know, possibly using stone material to make it look yeah. more impressive bigger than it even was well and in that sense i guess uh to a modern eye what would look like a scar on the landscape could well have been the 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 goal especially if you're revealing underlying geology you're not having to actually place those those rocks you can just simply show uh, and the limestone oh. sandstone this kind of thing and it will it will the sun will hit it frankly and it will look very impressive um, a lot of, yeah it would have the, been tended to be seen yeah, impressive. Absolutely, and then as you say, if you have, if you do have awkward plants uh, in the, I'm so imagining um, a, a strange sort of Mercy and Alan Titchmarsh, you know, a lovely guy, but he's having to put thorn bushes in a ditch. <laughs> um, anyway, so so that's interesting to know then. So the and so you have the raised land to the left then, and the dike to the right. Well, let's, let's have a look at some other photos though. Um, so uh, here we have a picture. Um, Kareg Ebeg. Um, is that looking at? Mm. Is that looking from or looking at uh, uh, Kareg? Okay, so that's the farm of Kareg Ebeg. Right. Yeah. Uh, down uh, down at the bottom. I think I'm guessing which picture is going to come up. It will be up in a second. Uh -huh. And what you're look, I think what you're looking at here is uh, a bit of um, a bit of the landscape where the the dike is. You see, it's almost sinuous. But what um, recent work has observed for the first time in and maps have already show this, but no one's actually made the point is that the, the, the dike is actually constructed over in, in short, straight lengths right. of anywhere from 30 to 40 metres upwards. And it, it is not sinuous, but it is carefully navigating the topography and never goes straight and never curves. Right. It always is built in straight little sections. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what Hadrian's Wall does at some of its best surviving element, mm -hmm. um, sections. Um, and, and there's been a lot of discussion about why that might be. And Keith Ray's argument is that this may be about making it as visible as possible in the landscape and impressive and imposing. Um, there are ways of looking at that problem. We still don't know. I mean, one of the other options, a more prosaic interpretation, is this is about the mechanism of getting crews of labourers to do a job. Yes. And you stake out two lines and build that between here and there. Yeah. And th but I think there is more than that to it. I would agree with Keith, there is more than that to it, because it does allow no one can approach this monument without being overlooked and it mm. overlooks you in a, in a very distinctive way. So the Carrigabega, this is a bit of a zoom lens shot here, but it shows, um, it shows it in farmland, uh, you know, pastoral landscape with, um, you know, the lovely sheep. Uh, but, and, and you can see that it's incorporated and surviving as a, as a, as a hedge boundary running up the hill there. Mm. Uh, but I think it does show also that it doesn't, any individual location on, on, on the dike doesn't necessarily have to have massive views westwards. Um, it's about the interconnectivity along the route. And we have to imagine, we can only speculate, but I think there would have been watchtowers set on or back from it. And I think at some point set forward from it, you know, by about half a mile on a major hill to, to warn people of, of the movement uh, through, through happening through the landscape. So it's not a line to be defended. It's an observation point and an impedance. Uh, it's a, a stop line, if you like, to stop and impede the movement of people. Uh -huh. And I think the main problem you'd want to face in a military sense, it's not just a military thing, but if you want to think of it in military terms, is, is people moving with their horses on horseback. Mm. You know, if you're on foot and you get observed in this landscape, you can you can get miles and miles east of Offa's Dyke 
and you will be intercepted by ho- riders. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. But but if but if you if you've got riders who can get across this landscape and not be intercepted, mm-hmm. you've got a serious problem. Whether it's fifty, a hundred, two hundred riders. Mm. So we're we're into our two towers, Tolkien and Uruk versus <laughs> the Rohirrim here. Well, you see, you see, you, you've just you know, completely undermined the point I was about to make about how actually uh, warfare at this point was it, war bands could be as little as thirteen people. You know, it, it's, yes, we're not yes. talking about tens of thousands, are we? In that sense, no, 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 yeah. no. That's what I mean. It's 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 about relatively small numbers, mm-hmm. but uh, and it's not, and and it's about you know uh, stopping them moving with their horses on horseback mm. and stopping them taking back things mm. <laughs> that they've raided. Yeah, that, that yeah you can't, you can't so, easily, uh, easily drove cattle or sheep across that, no. can you? No, so, so I think it's, 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 it's not necessarily about being an impassable barrier. Mm. It's about controlling movement. And in a peacetime context, it would have worked similarly. So it's not an either or for me. Because in a peacetime context, you can control. If you're looking at people trying to move cattle or move sheep through that landscape mm. and you want to control tax, that 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 pop that population, then th- this would serve the same way. Yes, they may be able to put a sheep on a shoulder and run up and down and sneak o- at night over the dike, but they're not going to be able to bring a flock over, are they? No. Or unless they catapult them over or something, you know, or, or dig long tunnels underneath. Yeah, uh, this is an image for you. Um, well, exactly. You yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of images, I've just just put a photo of as it's Slambyer Hill there. Um, yeah, this is one of the iconic moments sec- sections of. Uh, uh, of uh, Offers Dyke, and this is looking southward, so you can see it sort of skirting the hill. And uh, one of the amazing things about this site, which I think it has gone unnoticed really until Keith Ray and Ian Baptist's recent book, is that actually at this this area you can, maybe not in this photograph, you can see the scrapings behind the monument upslope where there are massive areas of unsurveyed quarries. Yeah. And so this is what perhaps one of those familiar bits of Offers Dyke, and you can see there it's not just sinuous, it's going in very short, straight lines, mm. and it's sort of going up the hill in, in like that. And, and, and But behind it, it's not simply a bank and ditch. Here you've got a counterscarp bank, so there's a bank built west of the ditch. So there's two ditches. There's a, there's a smaller ditch on the downslope side, on the western side. Mm-hmm. There's a massive ditch, a bank, but then a further feature you can just pick out as it goes up towards the skyline is that there's a series of massive scrapes where they've obviously scraped away behind and made the bank with the material from behind, not from the ditch. No. So it's a huge monument here, mm-hmm. and it does make the point, I think, that it's more complicated than we let on with potentially you know, multiple multiple dimensions to it. Well, and funnily, ah. enough, funnily enough, looking at uh, this particular image, I'm reminded of uh, of Iron Age hill forts in so much as oh yeah the 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 it doesn't conform to in particular, for example, a Roman notion of defence, um, and it, and it's not necessarily the 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 as the crow flies, but it's certainly designed to give an impression of landscape man- monuments yes, and yes, management. Absolutely. And and as you say, being being imposing, being noticed, being noticeable is is key. Um, speaking of being noticeable, uh, another picture that, that I'm just going to put up is um, we have uh, one of the new heritage posts that you sent over a photo of. Is oh this, yes, is, is this part of the goal to 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 address some of what we've been talking about in terms of people well, being able to cross the monument and not even know it's there in that sense? I, I, this is really interesting, yes, because I mean the, the point is you can go for miles and miles, even if you're on the national trail, mm-hmm. you can go for miles and miles and miles and not see a single heritage interpretation. So you probably wouldn't even be, unless you're a real archaeobofin, you won't be even looking for the monument. And and the village of Trevonan, that um, they they pulled together a lot of money to get a local uh, sculptor to carve these wonderful representations. And I cover this in my little, as uh, um, you can see on YouTube, my little uh, tour of mm-hmm. uh, Trevonan because we replaced the tour with a digital tour and these 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 two posts pair of posts one at either end of the village so the long distance walkers encounter this and it's about local pride it's mm-hmm. about information it doesn't really tell you anything it's visualized it's using art to mm-hmm. communicate something about the position of the village in relation to something much much bigger than itself and you know of this the, the, and, and story a story of national origins on both or, and of borderland origins yeah and so I think you know, I think what they've done in this village, they've got lots of very enthusiastic local people here. They've made a decision to do this themselves. This wasn't me. This wasn't any other heritage professional. Mm-hmm. They are proud of their 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 local 
industrial archaeology, their local uh, their offers dyke. They're interested in lo- down the road. There's a massive campaign about old Oswestry Hill Fort, which you are probably aware of, and many yes, of your of viewers course, will yes. be. Um, and, and, and that's literally, you know, uh, about I don't know how many miles, but not many miles away. It's Trevon just outside Oswestry. Mm. And so this area, for better or not, better or you know, I think they're really proud of their local landscape. Now, they, they also don't want it developed, and there's a bit of a nimbyism to it, of course, but also there's a lot of pride, in, in and this is manifest in this these boards. And these were put up for the Office Dyke Association's 50th anniversary, which was last year, and the past anniversary is next year. Um, and they these really come at a good time. And when I said at the beginning of the, we were talking about why I wanted to do this event digitally, because the time is so important, the timing is so important, mm. this is what I'm talking about, is that some for, for a variety of reasons, there's a real local passion, at least in some places, local enthusiasm groups in the far north who are looking for bits of Offers Dyke where it's not supposed to be. Um, uh, local groups working down near Chepstow in the Wide Valley with the um, outstanding natural beauty officer, the uh, uh, AONB officer down there. And there's the people, at Tra- the groups at Trevonan who are really wanting new research and new uh, you know, engagement. And I think those, those posts are whatever you think of them as art. I love them, but not everyone will. But, I, I, you know, my point is it, it's about communicating a connection between past and present, between the locality and a broader story a story of the borderlands and yeah. i think that's what we, we need to be thinking of much more how do we get these local groups to see themselves as part of something big and when i mean something big i don't mean a welsh story or an english story if you haven't made it if i haven't made that absolutely explicit but a story that is probably bigger in many ways mm-hmm. and that we start to make them think about parallels to world events and yeah. world processes well, oh, since prehistory to the present. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. I, I, well, I, and, and uh, well, I suppose just very briefly, actually. Um, uh, uh, do, do you know what the materials that were used in that particular? Um, they you know, used local heritage. wood, whatever it was, and local. Yeah, it was. They put a lot of effort into that sort of the re- well within, not from the village, but from the region. Yes, yeah, so uh, it was. Lo- they they put, they've got that on their website somewhere, but I I can't remember all off the top. But they did put effort into that sort of sense of using the material itself to be from the region and a local sculptor as well. So that sense of so locality. I love, I love the transparent green. Is that, is that yeah. glass or plastic, do you know? Yes, it is glass. So glass. It, 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 uh, Wonderful. the sun does go through it at various times of the day. I haven't photographed that yet. Yeah. But uh, yes, it does have a, so the Trevonan name and the coin of offer, which is a coin, is uh, on both of them. It's a, it's a coin of offer. Uh, well, the first, that... you know. And, yes, and, it, and, it, exactly. and it's a symbol of the landscape. And we'll, we'll come, exactly. I'll just come back to that in just a moment. But um, actually, speaking of, of art, uh, we should now, I think, launch the third competition of the, of the evening, yeah. and that is the art competition. Um, uh, the, 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 the idea, I'll just read my notes here to make sure I don't, I don't, I don't get this wrong. Uh, the idea being uh, to, um, uh, inspired by the special uh, special offer day and John Swagger's comics in particular, uh, sketch the significance of Offers Dyke, past and or present, and post it on Twitter uh, uh, to the uh, Offers Dyke collaboratory handle. Again, you can see that on the screen. So it could be a sketch. Uh, it could be something much more substantial. But I yes, think, I think, yes, I think I mean... you know, art uh, art begets art. I'm, I'm working with John Swagger, who's a uh, fantastic, uh, um, fantastic archaeologist and illustrator. And he's been doing a lot of work for the Old Oswestry History mm-hmm. uh, campaign and worldwide. He's been doing uh, comics and and he, you know, we, we, he's done the old uh, the Oswestry History Heritage comics and he presented about that. So look at our blog for his stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, come up with anything you want about that, something that communicates some some aspect of the significance of offers or what's like that'd be indeed, fantastic indeed it's great to see what people have to offer uh, and in, the, in, the, <laughs> and in that sense uh, let me just, just briefly cool. just put on screen uh, the prizes for this competition they're slightly different um ooh. first prize ooh, is a hard copy of uh, public archaeology arts of engagement um oh yes uh, a book that there was recently is. put out uh i I happen to have written the chapter. Actually, so oh, you 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 got one in your hands there. Happen. Brilliant. Yeah. I happen to have written the, uh, a chapter in that. A fantastic. Uh, edited, uh, co-edited by Mr. Uh, How, oh, sorry, Professor Williams there. Um, second prize, bottle opener, trowel. There's a bit of a pattern. And third prize, uh, your choice of an offer, Rex. Offers like 
Path National Trail patch. Uh, so definitely uh, send in those entries. I, I, I don't know, does that, is that fair to give people until the end of tomorrow to do art? Do you, do you want to have like a week on that one, maybe? If you're, just, yeah, just all to be right. nice okay. to people. Give you know? them time yeah, to let's be nice. produce. You know, as long as they don't go into the landscape and start trying to re-sculpt the actual monument, I'll get into trouble. You yeah. know, no major or... building projects, please. There's restrictions, people, yeah. remember? Well, yeah, exactly. You don't want to get <laughs> but, arrested. But, you know, something, for... some, something on paper, maybe, you uh-huh. know, something, uh-huh. yeah, but no. <laughs> yes, no, no, no geoglyphs. There are actually, do you know, there are actually very few visualisations of Arthur's Dyke that are not by landscape artists trying to yeah. look at the a bit of a bump in the landscape. It's lots of evocative mm. sort of watercolours. But mm-hmm. nothing, very little anyway, apart from John Swagger's work mm-hmm. and a few others that actually try to capture something of the historical monument mm-hmm. or the, how the significance of the monuments are today. So really, um, beyond the sort of landscape art people who've done lovely watercolours, Offers Dyke isn't really visualised in the same way. Yeah. There's a few heritage interpretations of Offer with hands on hips mm. going, we'll build that dyke. You know, but apart <laughs> from that, you know, um, so it's really, it's really, you know, there's a lot to be done here. You know, it's, yep. so it's over to you, you YouTubers, do yeah, your yeah. magic. Yeah, get, 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 get busy with those. Show us the way it was. Well, um, you, you mentioned the offer, the offer coin. This is a little thing that I uh, have from childhood. It's wow. uh, offer coin made in leather. It says prostatin on it, and uh, this was we, we picked this up from the um, uh, the tourist information centre on the beach, basically next to yes. next to the end of the path. So, so this this coin is it's interesting actually, and this is this is this is a perfect stepping off point for the next portion of the conversation. It's interesting that the coin is evocative of something for so many people, especially of that of that 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 path through the landscape, but also at the same time. Uh, as you say, so often the 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 that 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 potential for cultural significance is taken over by the notion of of a simple English Welsh uh, argument or border dispute, yeah. as it were. And and this is particularly highlighted by the very fact that Trevonan is a town in England, as opposed mm. to in Wales. It has a very Welsh name. Trev means town mm. for a start. Um, and I find that very interesting that that that, that, that this that by its nature, reflects that this is a complex border landscape. Mm. It's not. It's not simple. Uh, Prostatin and... have long used that coin, and it, I, I've seen it on the railway station. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah, it's it's part of the local. Like it is part, but it's not. Perhaps. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot more we need to. We could potentially do with offers, mm. And It hasn't. Doesn't. It's not about a nationalist story. And it's not. It's about uh, understanding a complex landscape and the complex interactions of different peoples. I mean, I hear I hear lots of Polish around my area. You know, there's this is a this is an, you know, we're, we're all living in a multicultural society. This is not about English and Welsh anyway. This is about a broader story of the nation and beyond. And I think people who build earthworks for good, bad, or indifferent, and probably always for bad, um, are people we should be you know researching because this is a topic that is affecting it affects people's understanding of the landscape today, and it will uh, you know, and it's about guarding against potential. Should we say simplistic stories yes. about the relationship? Yeah. Well, I, and it's funny. It's funny you should say say that because because again, as I was explaining at the beginning of this this uh, this session, um, I'm not super familiar with the monument. I think there was a certain also element of growing up next to it meant that I could always look at it if I wanted to, but I just never did. Mm. <laughs> yeah, before I knew it, I was living hundreds of miles away. Um, but what's interesting is that. Uh, you brought to my attention the notion that it's not necessarily just about, especially, say, the heptarchy, uh, some sort of united Saxon identity and isolating mm-hmm. Welsh. There's also an element of the different kingdoms at different times mm-hmm. making different allegiances. So you may yeah, well have, have I don't know, people in Wessex or Sussex joining up with the Welsh across the border uh, to attack Mercia. Because at various points, Mercia was a very a very wealthy and not necessarily particularly popular kingdom amongst no them. nobody liked them no precisely <laughs> <laughs> nobody um, liked them. <laughs> so but, so but again it highlights that that all of this is complicated and also crucially none of it was inevitable and i find i, I take a certain amount of comfort from the fact that that we are as ever in the business of of discussing what's new about the past not mapping our assumptions onto it mm. as it were um is there anything else that, that, that we haven't covered, uh, Howard? Have, is there anything that you would that you'd like to say that you'd like to point people towards before we we cut we uh, enter uh, the exciting multi multi choice quiz that we have lined up for folks? 
Do you know, at the end of the end, end of this long day, where I, I would just I, I just re- ask people that if you haven't had a chance to go through the presentations, they're on our of Office Start Collaboratory blog. We've got a post for each one, so you can find out either they posted information on the blog itself mm-hmm. or their Twitter presentation or the YouTube video. If you're unsure about how to navigate, just send us an email. But do look back over the presentations. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not all about just what does it mean to us. They are about – we have – some of the presentations are suggesting new interpretations of aspects. And, so, and, and the other point to say is that the, the whole point of this special offer day, which I perhaps haven't said in any of the videos, which is to my shame, is the whole point was to have a mixture of archaeologists and heritage professionals – and local enthusiasts give their presentations. Mm. Some of the other events, we've we've really we've said we're doing it, but frankly, it's been all of the heritage, you know, the experts speaking. And this was to celebrate the local communities up and down the line of Offers Dyke. Now, mm-hmm. Be- mm-hmm. a lot of them couldn't present, and a lot of them are very nervous about presenting. And some of those presentations, you know, you that you, you could it was it was a, a tough job for me to not to make them do it but just to persuade them yes this is we want to know we want to hear mm-hmm. and i think that there's going to be more people wanting to be involved and i so look back over the presentations please and if you want to know anything further look at our website follow the links and resources all, all, all the links are actually it. below uh, below below this stream oh yes of course links of course in the, in the, the wonders of youtube yes yeah, of course. so yeah everything's there for you you know yeah. and just get in get interested and uh when all this local this this current pandemic nightmare ends, you know, get out there and look at some of what's dyke at, or offers dyke or both because they're wonderful. Not just to walk along, but to walk past and around. They're wonderful landscapes, the wonderful monuments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, brilliant. Thank you. And, and in that sense, it's been, it's been it's been it's been it's been a good it's been it's been fun to see this coming together. And also, this has been a great opportunity for me to to do. Uh, well, my second live stream on this channel. Um, yesterday's one was an interesting one. Uh, I won't go too much into that, but uh, the first success, fully successful live stream, shall we say? Well, you've been a um, bit of a savior for us here. You know, you, Archeo Super's <laughs> has, has, has been part of the sort of of of, of salvaging uh, uh, us. So I, we're we're very grateful for your input oh, on do. every level. It's been fantastic. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, so uh, let's let's dive in then now to the multi choice quiz. And I just want to quickly just put up the the prizes for this quiz, uh, just so people mm-hmm. know. Uh, and this is going to be a series of ten questions. We will put the questions on screen. Uh, first price for the quiz. First price. First prize for the quiz uh, is the uh, uh, offers like association fiftieth anniversary. Mug. Uh, very good, very good. Second prize, again, as per as per uh, the course, is a bottle opener trowel. Uh, some Ooh. people would count that as first prize. Yeah, I'm just saying. But, uh, yeah, but <laughs> and, uh, and third prize uh, is your choice of uh, offers like path. National you can trail. prize open your bottle. No, no, no more puns. No, I'm sorry. I was going to talk about prizing open bottles, but no. <laughs> I, I got to stop. It, this is, it becomes it comes a bit of a problem, doesn't it? Too many puns. So it I can be. Should. It can be. My my poor poor wife, Mrs. Soup, has to live with me, and uh, uh, I have a pun sickness. So definitely, um, she's the one being punished. <laughs> So, um, questions. Now, we have 10 questions, and we'd like you to to make a note of, uh, I suppose, the number of the question and then your answer in a succession yeah. of lines in a tweet to at OD, uh, OD Collaboratory. That's the easiest way of saying that. Yeah, OD Collaboratory. OD yeah. Collaboratory. And um, if, if lots of people get all the answers right, then I, I imagine some some out of the hat element will come into it, but this is also we'll part have of to fun. yeah we'll we'll make it up. I mean we'll no we'll uh, we'll make a, a an informed and fair choice a based string, on random a stringent randomization. Yes, stringent. exactly. No, yeah. no nepotism here. No um, nepotism. No, no, no. I'm going to win all of this. You know that. <laughs> I want those so, bottle openers. I don't want to win. I want to come second. <laughs> Question one, uh, now on screen. Um, what percentage of Offers Dyke was assessed as being in an in, in a favourable condition by the Offers Dyke management plan? Uh, there are four potential answers. Answer A, 5.6%. Answer B, 6.5%. Answer C, 8.7%. Or answer D, 12.5%. Uh, so make a note of your of your answer. Uh, put it in a tweet. So this would, I guess, the this would be one dash 
and then I, 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 a letter. I'm not going to say a letter because I'm not. I don't know the answer, but I don't know. I accidentally say the answer. So one dash x, for example. Um, so that's question one. Oh, and these, these are these are these deliberately designed to be to be. Uh, they're all from are, are the you... presentations today. Ah, so they're, they're things you can find out from the presentations today. Very not, good. Uh, so Very that, good. So, so the idea is, if so you were paying the attention, I'm sounding like a, a university professor now. Uh -huh, aren't I? Uh -huh. If you were paying attention, you would know the answers to these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I, I've, I've, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, Professor. Uh, question two. How many <laughs> heritage posts have been uh, erected in Trevonan, marking mm -hmm. the 50th anniversary of the Offers Dyke Association? Mm -hmm. How many heritage posts have been erected in Trevonan, marking the 50th anniversary of the Offers Dyke Association? So this would be another line in that tweet, two dash, and then your answer. Answer mm -hmm. A, one, B, two, C, three, D, Five and I might be wrong, but I do believe that you have given the answer away during the stream to that question. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> it just means people have to pay attention. Uh, or was I deliberately oh, trying to obfuscating? No. <laughs> uh, question number three: uh, Where, according to folklore, did Arthur meet his bride? Oh blimey! Uh, answer A: Caer Alin Hillfort. Answer B, Watts Dyke. Answer C, Offers Dyke. Or answer D, Old Oswestry Hillfort. Again, so this would be three dash and then your answer A, B, C, mm. or D. And that's an interesting one as well. Is this wet? Just out of interest, is this because given that Arthur is a figure of folklore, is this something in the Mabinogion perhaps or? Yeah, probably, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably, probably something. <laughs> Late and made up some rubbish from the oh, late I see. Yeah, 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 some, some, some yeah. monk. Just, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I can't remember now off the top of my head. It's okay. just one of those things. It's an uh -huh. Arthurian thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice stories. thing. It's a nice thing. It's a romantic thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question five. He was everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> question number five. Where is the only up to date interpretation panel for Watts Dyke? located oh that's an interesting one this is uh, a matter of interpretation huh this is something that people may dispute but i okay i, I, did, I did come to a conclusion okay. on that point uh well a new brighton is, is this is this because is this in comparison to brighton on the south coast of england as in new brighton or i don't know because there's another there's a, various brightons aren't there yeah. and of course there's yeah. there, there's a Wirral brighton as well oh, so, is there? Oh, yeah, oh, there's oh, lots oh, of new brightons but this one was i think built because it was in an ironic sense because it's as far from the sea or anything that resembles brighton as you could possibly go oh, I can imagine. so that's my that's my interpretation of it it's a lovely place uh-huh but he says be sort of backtracking because <laughs> he realizes that he knows people from there so <laughs> lovely place and moving, yet moving on and to be Answer B, uh, Erdig Hall. Uh, answer C, uh, Gabowan. Uh, Gabowan, Gabowan. And answer D, Old Oswestry Hillfort. Uh, Old Oswestry Hillfort, of course, as you say, having been subject to a campaign recently. Um, and uh, a very passionate campaign, actually. So people, mm. love, people do love their historic landscape. And mm. that's good to draw on. And especially in this instance, draw people's attention to uh, Offer's Dyke. Yeah. Question number six of ten. Uh, which hill fort is not on the line of either Watts Dyke or Offers Dyke? Uh, answer A, Kair Alin. Um, answer B, Old Oswestry. Answer C, Moel Fen Fentley. Fentley. And yeah, answer D, Plan uh, Uh Which of those four Forts, a hill fort is not on the line of either Watts Dyke or Offers Dyke. Now, obviously, having lived in England now for the best part of twelve years, I'm hoping that my pronunciation isn't too far off the mark. It's 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 been a much while. better than mine. Thank you, Jochen uh, Bauer. Question number seven out of ten. Um, You're getting stressed by this. You realise I don't even know the answers now. <laughs> I, I did at the beginning of the day, but. Oh uh, well, well, well. Uh, y you'll have to rewatch everything then. I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, to do. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, at which modern Flincher village is Offers Dyke thought to have to have its northern terminus? Oh. Uh, answer A. Uh, Treven. Answer B. Tremerchion. Uh, answer D C. Trelaunid. 
Uh, actually, didn't uh, Trelawned have a Bronze Age uh, burial mound in? A Neolithic, it's thought. The Gop Is it Cairn. Neolithic now? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Allegedly. Oh. The Gop Cairn, the biggest mound in Wales. Yeah. Well, actually, I uh, I used to go to a Gop all the time. Uh, it's one of my favourite places to go as a teenager. Um, uh, the the hill that is quick quick fun fact the forest behind a gop on on sort of the back there's this sort of portion where no sunlight gets in and it's a great place to go because there's no sound and you can really scare yourself for, uh, you know very very quickly it's, it's a it's a eerie place I love it anyway yeah. um and answer D Trebonen uh, uh obviously um the town uh, that we've been talking about in terms of the her- the heritage posts as well. So, yeah. uh, as question seven, traditionally, at which modern Flincher village is offers like thought to have its northern terminus? Hint, hint, Flincher is not in England. So maybe that'll discount one of the answers there. Again, if people have been paying attention. Uh, question eight uh, on this uh, ten question quiz: What does PAS stand for? PAS, is it Perambulatory Auxiliary Surveyors? Is it Penders Anglian sc- Scouts? <laughs> is it Puritanical Anti Saxonists? Or is it Portable Antiques Scheme? Uh, so again, the uh, format for that would be 8 dash and then the letter that is your answer. Uh, question 9 of 10. Which is Britain's second longest early early medieval linear earthwork? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, and the thing, I, 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 I uh, so uh, A, Grimm's Ditch, <laughs> B, Watts Dyke, C, Offers Dyke, or D, East and uh, West and East, Wands Dyke. Ooh, interesting. And uh, finally, question 10. This is probably the most difficult of them all. Uh, I have to say, if there's a ditch that's strange in your neighbourhood, who are you going to call? If a bank is weird and it don't look good, who are you going to call? <laughs> and to A, your local It's a fan. matter of a debate, I know. But... <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, frankly, it's a matter of debate, which is what's an office like for some people. Uh, but, uh, and to A, uh, your local finds liaison officer. And to B, Ghostbusters, or the Ghostbusters, <laughs> offer, uh, answer C, uh, rather, uh, the offers like Collaboratory, and uh, answer D, the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, indeed. So, uh, yeah, if uh, if there's a ditch that's strange in your neighbourhood, who are you going to call? Uh, question 10, and that would be 10 dash, and then the letter of your answer. Do tweet that to the uh, Offers Dyke Collaboratory Twitter handle. And uh, for this... Very seriously, this quiz. Oh, very serious. Super serious. Super. This is the question of the day, really. This is the, you know... Um, Have you all... learned anything today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you take away one thing from today, take that question. <laughs> Something away. today. Yeah. Um, yeah. It has been uh, a pleasure uh, seeing this come together and helping with it. Um I uh, also, I suppose we should say, uh, whereas for the arts, maybe we'll allow a week. Um, do you want to say, is this tomorrow midnight again? Yeah, and make it yeah. tomorrow. Make them think, make them work hard, fast, quick. Indeed. Yeah. Watch, watch, learn, answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Do, if, just in terms Thank of closing you. comments, is there anything else that you want to just to, to say or point people towards? Obviously, links to all relevant websites are below the stream, and um, and all day you have been tweeting from that that account there. But is there any sort of final thought that you want to leave people with that people you know, want people to reflect upon? Obviously, in addition to the who you're going to call question. It's oh, no, I haven't got anything too profound to say other than. Like any archaeological project this writ large, that there were people I didn't think would be presenting, couldn't present, but physically, mm-hmm. but could do the digital things. Mm-hmm. Things just came together. Paul Mortimer doing his uh, uh, Red World ha- with glasses on. You helping out. Uh, you know, um, Dr. Cara Critchell helping out with uh, videoing me at Trevonan. Mm-hmm. Um, so many bits and pieces have come together and people have helped in ways that, that I, you know, I couldn't have expected or uh, you know anticipated. And it's been, and that I think it's, I'm very grateful to all about the office dyke association and, and all of the support from the Trevon and heritage group and all the, and Andy Heaton and Pauline Clark, all the people that have helped make this possible. I thank 
and the speakers and those that listened. But I'm, I, I just think that's a part of, in this uncertain time, I think that is a small microcosm of what mm. archaeologists tend to do. Mm. Yes, and we complain about it a lot. A lot of our labour ends up being on top of other things and happenstance, and it's annoying and we hate it. And yet exact, it's exactly what makes it such a wonderful area of research and, and activities, and, and it brings together people from different lines of work. So in these uncertain times, that's the point I want to get. Nothing to do with Offers Dyke at all. It's about this is how archaeology works, and it's not always ideal, and it's not always good for everyone. But I'm really grateful at this particular moment. I'm really grateful of everyone that's that's pulled out all the stops and really, really made this possible. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I suppose I, I would just say that uh, it's been a real pleasure having the opportunity to to share for the first time, certainly on on the, the channel where this is streaming, a monument that's so familiar to me, but also so uh, so elusive as well to me. It's one of those things where. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever would have. It's like sort of saying, "Well, this this is my this is my back garden." To people, no one's going to find that interesting. Whereas actually having having the ability to just to introduce people to this monument and also an excuse now to read. Well, at some point you must come down our way and I'll give you a tour of some nice bits I, no one knows I, about. I, I, that, that would be wonderful. <laughs> that really would because because yeah because hitherto I think I've walked on the trail and as you yes. say the trail is largely for. Uh, for landscape appreciation as opposed to necessarily the archaeology so i'd love to see some of that stuff in person definitely uh, obviously of course when we're allowed to to, to travel of course, freely of course. once more yes, yes. And, and and in that sense i, I guess want to uh, just something else i just wanted to, to say i guess that you haven't just said is that this has been a really great pointer to to how this can be done even in the next even if it's you know a six month uh, problem in terms of getting back up to speed in terms of regular meetings for yeah. people, uh, this yeah. sort of stuff can be done online, and it's been a it's yeah. been it's been a uh, obviously it's not new, it's not groundbreaking in that sense. No, but it can uh, be pulled together last minute. Yeah. We've definitely shown that. <laughs> so um, so yeah, thank you, thank you for your time as well. Because obviously you've been very uh, very busy, but also. Uh, freely accessible right. in terms of setting this up as well so thank, uh, you. thank you and i've enjoyed it and i'm exhausted but i think it's it's been a hopefully uh anyone wants to get in touch and wants to know what what not to do uh, I'll, I'll try and give them some guidance but uh, i think it's all gone very well much better than i thought it was so thanks everyone <laughs> wonderful uh well are you gonna, gonna have a nice cup of tea now do you think yes tea tea uh -huh. is the answer yeah, yeah. viking tea <laughs> I've got my Viking mug or my office night mug. I've got a couple of those. So, you know, who knows? I'll go down and see what I want, what Indeed. blend I want. And I, I hear that they're very, very uh, sought after prizes as well. So, yes. So, I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as I say, did, did also do do take a look back at the stream if you missed any of those questions. If you want to enter any of the other competitions, uh, I'm pretty sure Howard is planning on tweeting out some details of some of these competitions after this as well, so people yeah. can get up to speed yeah. with that as well. So, uh, let's leave it there. Let's not draw this out any further. Thank you and good night, Howard, and good night, everyone at home. Good night. Thank you.